Check, check, one, two, one, two. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> what is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back. It's your boy, Blue. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I almost said 2020. I'm really trying not to say that because it's, it's not technically considered Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. But welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator, guys. Uh, we're going to try this once again. We're back at the same airport we left off at, Hachichojima, out here in Japan. Still checking out the Cha Japan World Update. Today we'll meet in the a and uh, A320 using the A320 Fly-By-Wire NX project. And I actually did a test flight earlier in this plane and it actually worked. Yes, it actually worked. I was able to do a flight from point A to point B, no crashes. VNAV sort of worked. You know, it, 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 went, it went well, it went well. So I'm, I'm kind of hyping it up right now. So hopefully it doesn't disappoint us today. Uh, hopefully we don't have any streams, no, any uh, any crashes at all. We only have one leg, Uno. Today call signs, A and A, Uno, Uno, Seis, 116. It's gonna go down, I'm look, looking forward to it. We got the sun rising here in Hachichojima out here in Japan. It's going to be super dope, man. If you guys want to join us as per usual, come through. All players are RJTH, right? Yeah, RJTH, Romeo Juliet Tango Hotel. That is where we are located right now. We're on the all player servers, USA East. And matter of fact, I'm even on VATSIM right now. So if you don't even, if you don't have Microsoft Flight Simulator and you're on P3D, you're on X Plane 11, come through. You can fly with us. I'll be on Unicom hanging out, man. Welcome to the stream, guys. Great to see you guys. Happy what, Thursday. Happy Thursday. Matt, welcome to the stream, man. Grimlock, welcome to the stream. Aviation Swim Chat, what up, man? Good to see you. Welcome back. Bombosa's in the building. Good to see you, bro. Welcome back, man. Matt Keith B, welcome back, my friend. Great to see you great to see you man prince Ameg ran good to see you man wiggle for life what up man good to see you welcome to the stream good to see you good to see you prince good to see you man exclusive 808s in the building what's up man tino star welcome aboard captain reynolds welcome back man i know you hard to work over there man so do your thing man um but appreciate you coming through and i'm sure you're probably listening to the blue games podcast right now <laughs> just kidding some pilot welcome to the stream and actually rolls off the tongue blue games podcast i like that uh judo capri good to see you man aviation jg good to see you magnus welcome to the stream welcome 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 man i'm looking forward to today as long as we don't have any crashes i'm happy i'm happy I'm happy. David Bukachi, welcome back to the stream, man. Great to see you. Avia345, welcome back, man. Good to see you, man. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're having a great day. Yes, sir, the storms have passed. Yesterday, if you missed yesterday's stream, definitely check it out. At least watch the second half of it because uh, we had to land at this exact airport in a horrible storm. It was zero visibility. Uh, it's, a, it's by some miracle we actually were able to get the wheels to touch the pavement. Um, so I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go back and watch that. Uh, I didn't break that in the chapters yet, but go back and scroll to the end. Check it out. Today, the weather's looking a heck of a lot better. Uh, we got partly cl cloudy skies, and uh, it's looking nice. But, but, today we're heading to Kushiro. What's it called? Oh, it's in the title. Yes, Kushiro. This is another ha uh, handcrafted airport that was released with the Japan World Update. So we're flying out there. It's going to be an hour, 15, hour and a half long flight. Uh, not expecting any delays, but we may have some uh, some sketchy weather in the area. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys. You guys ready? We're in the a and A A320 NX. If you guys want to get the link for the NX, if you don't have it, type in exclamation mark A320 NX in chat. And Nightbot, if he's awake, should send you a link to uh, the A320 NX project website they also have a discord channel i am no in no way affiliated with them but i do love what they're doing and i fully support and back uh, a project like this who are trying to supply a great quality freeware at a payware quality you feel me so it's gonna be good we'll talk about a lot of stuff it's gonna be a lot, a lot of fun looks like nightbot is alive amazing andy miller welcome to the stream md10 vr welcome to the stream uh good to see you guys welcome 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 is there any tutorials on how to get that sim uh jd bear probably check out i don't know i would just google it honestly i don't know specifically where you could get that but google it you can check it out um all right guys um let's see uh gamer boat you're so low well bro is today we're gonna bring you high you know what we do out here the uh our slogan is rise above so today we're gonna get you to rise above man it's gonna be amazing all right guys let's hop in the cockpit of the a320 oh man look at that sun is rising over there off right behind the camera oh look at that 
this game is so beautiful. <laughs> it, it just is. It's so hard. There's some days I'm like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go back to X plane and and, and fly some airliners and X plane. Then I look at this and I'm like, okay, maybe 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 next week. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, sun's rising on the other side of that mountain over there. I have the one and only gate. So thank you guys for not spawning on top of me. I do appreciate that, my friends. All right. Well, let's let's uh. Oh yeah, I just like looking at it. I just want to look at it for a little while. All right, let's hop inside. And I'm gonna kill the music so you guys can enjoy the sounds. I did install a, uh, I wouldn't call it a new sound pack, but it's been out for a while by FT Sim. Uh, he's made, been, oh, I didn't realize that I, had, I didn't have that muted. Um, FT Sim makes a lot of the good sound packs for X-Plane and for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So today we'll be using his. I don't think I actually activated my track IR. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. Uh, no problem, Juno. No problem, man. Understand. I'll catch you later. Oh, what the heck happened? See that? Oh, it sounds like a, a teleporter or something. Okay, there we go. All right, we're good. All right, so. Extra one power. Actually, battery one, battery two. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Love it, man. Love it, man. Let's start this bird. Yes, sir, Avia. I, I think my I need to move my headset because I can't look all the way up. There we go. Alright, again, we're in the NX version, so now we need to actually align the ADRs. And it will turn the pumps on. So using track IR to move my head around. Uh, again, if you're looking for a, a track IR alternative, check out Smooth Track. It's a mobile app. And you just use your phone to track your head. It's actually pretty cool. So if you don't have track IR you, or you can't get it, I recommend you guys try out Smooth Track. It's actually very cheap. It's like ten dollars in the App Store, and it tracks your head, and it works for Microsoft Flight Simulator and any other uh, game that supports track IR. All right, we'll turn the nav lights, seatbelt signs on. Don't you just love pressing buttons? And we'll get the APU started. And I'll get these a little bit brighter. I do like that now it doesn't just come on with the screens completely black, but they're just dim. So you just turn them up so that way it's not completely off. I do like that. All right, the e cams. All right, so we are completely cone dark today, guys. I'm going to switch to Unicom for VATSIM, which is 122.8. It's universal. No matter where you go, Unicom is always 122.8 on VATSIM. In the real world, uh, that is not the case. It's Unicom is depicted on the chart. All right, so uh, again, we're all completely cold and dark. I haven't even put our flight plan in here yet, so we can do this completely from scratch. So if you haven't joined yet, you have a little bit of time. Uh, we'll be at Romeo Juliet Tango Hotel slash uh, Romeo Romeo Juliet. Haha, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Romeo Juliet's Charlie Kilo. All right, there it is. And return. Now that's put in. Our cruise today, I think, is actually 36,000. And what is my. Oh, shoot. Uh, what is my cost index? We'll probably just put 99. Yeah, we'll do 99. We'll get there a bit faster. And we go to the next page. That's already pre filled for us. I don't know if it's accurate, but we're just not going to worry about it today. Um, we could spend forever trying to figure that out. So let's go ahead and go to. Uh, we could do perf. We'll do that later. We'll do flight plan first. I'm going to click on our from RJTH. That is our uh, departure airport. Click on departure. We do have a departure for runway 8. So click on that little button next to that. Miyak is our departure. Our standard instrument departure. <clears throat> and our transition from that is Mo. Let me see if that's going to show up. Maybe not. It's going to hit insert because it doesn't even give me the option. Oh, wait, maybe. Huh. Okay, it says Sid Miyak 3 and in transition it just says nothing. Let's hit insert and see if it puts it in 4. Yeah, there it is, Mo. Alright, cool. So I, I did a flight earlier and it actually flew the arrival correctly into this airport, so We'll see. I don't know if that's just the NX version that actually flies the departures and arrival correctly, or if it's a it's just how it is. I don't know because I don't know. I always kind of blame everything on Microsoft. All right. So after that, the next waypoint is going to be uh, actually we have an airway. So I'm going to click on Mo, 
and click on Airways, and then our airway is the Victor 1.8. So Victor 1.8. Uh, did I do that right? Is it this one? It didn't go in. Victor 1.8. It just disappeared. <laughs> just can I can I not can I not put airways? Is that is that not working? Can anybody tell me that's not working? What up, Sam? Good to see you, man. Welcome to the stream. Ultra American Gamer, what up, man? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Uh, Captain Cali, welcome back. Matt, good to see you, man. Adrian Guzman, welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah. So Victor, is that right? Victor one eight. Yeah, Victor one eight. Victor. Uh, oh, by the way, if you guys don't want to skip this part, if you type in exclamation mark flight plan, I already did the whole flight plan ahead of time so you can just put it right into your FMC so you don't have to do all this stuff if you don't want to made it easy for you guys right, so airways Victor 1 8 and the second button all right it just disappears all right let's go to uh, uh, x-ray alpha Charlie it'll appear after okay gotcha that's weird. After when? <laughs> like, when is it gonna show up? Okay, there's uh, X-ray Alpha Charlie. I don't know which one it is. Let's just hope that's the first one. Uh, we'll see. Oh, now it says direct. And then after that, we do actually have a direct for a waypoint named Juliet Delta. So that is correct. It's kind of slow, right? It takes a bit of time. There it is. It, well, it took a long time, didn't it? All right, JD. I'm actually going to have to figure out what that NDB is because if I don't, I could pick the wrong one. Apparently, there's like five of them. All right, so JD is going to be uh, 389. Uh, GPS coordinate for it is 44. None of these are correct. All these are wrong. Is another page? No. Let's just choose the first one and see what happens. Alright, insert. 208, that sounds about right. right. Yeah, that should be right. No, it should be 108 miles. All right, sounds good, JD. Thank you, gamer, for the like. Reed kid, what's up, man? What's the stream? All right, we'll, we'll we'll change it if we need to. Next waypoint is going to be Yankee Tango Echo. Let's put that here, new waypoint, and give it a second. It takes like a few seconds. It's like it's like it's almost like it has to search it. <laughs> it's like it's looking for it. it. Takes about as long as Microsoft Flight Simulator has to execute didn't do anything did it actually go through there it is it came through uh yte is actually not an ndb it's a vor please <clears throat> so you don't want the first one ndb you want the second one maybe i'm hoping that these are the right waypoints there's so many of them 324 that might be right i don't know i think it's supposed to be 100 we'll see we maybe go in the wrong place right, after that we have an airway of uh victor 36 so clicking on that again airways and let's see if it'll give us the Victor, sorry, the, yeah, Victor 36 airway. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm basically one, I'm wanting to test it to see if it'll actually let me put in a full flight plan like this. And then after that, Hotel Papa Echo. You said Microsoft would be 3,000 times better with fighter jets? I wouldn't say 3,000 times. I don't think that fighter jets would really make that big of a difference in this simulator. I mean, yes, it'd be cool to have them. I mean, we have like one right now, the, the kind of weird one, but I don't think it's that dire to have fighter jets, honestly. That's just for me, and I like fighter jets. Uh, all right, so we clicked on the first one and just hope it's the right one. <laughs> and then Victor 34, I don't know that these, these airways are actually working. Like I click on it and it just disappears. So it's basically just us going direct. And this is, again, why I don't fly IFR with ATC because of this reason right here uh, and then we have another airway which is Zulu 1-3 it really bothers me honestly because I I know that I need to have airways yeah 
Yeah, I actually agree with you, Wiggle for Life. I actually do agree with you. The issue with 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 the fighter jets is what people do with them. You know what I mean? That's that's my problem with fighter jets. I love fighter jets. Like, I love DCS World, but that's a simulator, right? If you bring fighter, if you bring fighter jets, which there's gonna be fighter jets eventually. There's gonna be more and more fighter jets coming to the sim. Uh, you're just gonna see a lot of, as he said, ten year olds flying around, buzzing the tower, uh, flying into people in the air, you know, and it gets old, especially for streamers. All right, after that we have our a very tiny arrival. I don't, I don't trust any of this flight plan at all. It's super weird. It's just, I mean, it's it's the it's the right waypoints, but it's just weird. I don't know. It's weird. So our destination, click on destination, arrival, it's going to be uh, VOR, sorry, it's going to be RNAV, runway 35, is it 35? Yeah, RNAV 35 is our approach today, and the star, it says there is no star. I do want a star. I would like a star. Is there any stars available? No stars. Okay, no stars in. Insert. So we missed waypoint, though. We missed Kushi, uh, Kushi, after Akesi. We need to add a waypoint called K U S S Y. Hopefully, it'll put it in the right order. Let's see. Uh, no, it did not. Where is it? It's not even in here. A Kessie D cell to crane. They're gonna add a uh, F fifteen in October. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not excited about that. To be honest with you. I'm excited about DCS at fighter jets, but not really just, I don't know. I don't know. Where's my, where the heck is my waypoint that I just put in? I'm gonna hit insert and see what happens. Yeah, I didn't put it. It's not, it's nowhere to be found. Let me try it again. Actually, look at that, Zulu 1-3, that, that went in. That airway is in there. That's the only airway that, that actually got captured. I'm gonna click on a Kessie, here's lateral Rev from Akesi, and then I'm gonna click. I want uh, my next waypoint to be K Kilo Uniform Sierra Sierra Yankee, and then next waypoint. I click it, it disappears, it goes to the next page, like it actually did something, and it's not there. Uh, have they fixed the VNAV in the A320? Uh, we're gonna find out today. We're gonna find out today. All right, this is this is really bugging me. It's really, really. Oh, thunder! Oh boy, we need to get out of here. Uh, this is really bugging me. There is no. All right, whatever. All right, V one 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 nine, VR one two five, V two one two eight. Are those correct? I don't know. We're gonna go with it though. Um, throttle reduction. Uh, that's fine. Our clean climb out speed two hundred seven. Uh, we'll do flaps one. Uh, flex temp twenty. And next phase, put 210 here. That's our pre-selected climb speed. Cruise. Uh, yeah, we should be good to go there. What up, Edward? Good to see you, man. Welcome to the stream. All right, well, we're going to go with that. We are missing a waypoint. It really bothers me. It bothers me so much. Let me see if I can figure it out. Hold on. Let me take. Let me see if I can take off the RNAV. Can I take it off? No? Did I already screw it up? Is it too late for me to actually get it right? All right, all right. We're gonna. How, how important is that waypoint? Let me find out. Uh, let's see. According to my charts, the Cussy arrival is pretty important. Yeah. Pretty darn important. Maybe it's not for that runway. That could be it. Let me see. Yeah, actually, we don't even need it. Yeah, we don't even need it. All right, cool. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right, performance is good. Initiation is good. Flight plan is good. Radio navigation. There is no ILS because we're not doing an ILS. We don't need RNAV, so there's nothing to put in that section. Other than that, we're good to go. Let's get our head out of the out of out of there, and let's get ready to push back. APU. I actually didn't ever finish firing that up. Jay knows the way. Hello, twenty minutes late, squad. <laughs> uh, Magnus, where did I find the setting in the sim? What setting are you talking about, uh, Magnus? And Javion, good to see you, man. Welcome back, or Javion? Sorry, Javion Johnson. S 
sounds good, Riku. Thank you, man, so much for coming through, and thank you for uh, hanging out with us today. All right, APU should be firing up. You can see that right there, and the EGT and the APU is rising, and you should be able to hear the APU firing up too. Oh, it's such a beautiful plane. I was like, I know I hear somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that in the little, uh, what plane, what plane are you flying this person? It must be in a, uh, a plane that I don't own if you show up in that. Can I do a flight from Houston to McAllen, Texas in the United 3320? Uh, not today, but, uh, I'm, I'm all down for flights from Houston. That's my hometown. All right, the blades are spinning, not because it's on, because of the wind. APU's coming out the back hole. And it sounds good. Alright, that's good. Should say available here in a second. We'll go ahead and turn the beacon on. And we'll get the uh, jetway pushed away. Jetway disconnection, please, and thank you. Current altimeter is 1012. Alright, APU avail. APU bleed coming on. External power going off. All the fuel pumps are on, eight ears are aligned. We'll give the crew some, some air supply. You can actually hear it powering up even more now. Sounds are really good, I gotta say. And we'll go ahead and ask for that pushback truck. We'll do that now. Again, we're taking runway eight guys for departure. That's gonna be that runway over there off my left wing. So I'm gonna push back, nose to the left. And uh, I suggest the rest of you guys do the same. Now let's do it like this. Let's try to be official if we can. And uh, it's gonna be only one aircraft allowed on runway at a time. So somebody's gonna have to back taxi, take off, back taxi, take off. You got me? So I'll be waiting for you guys if you're ahead of me. Request pushback. We'll attempt to do this the correct way. I'll even make my radio calls too if anybody's on VATSIM. All right, we're gonna start at 10,000. Cruising at 36,000, guys. Remember that today? All right, jetway is disconnected. APU is running, and the truck should be uh, connected. Oops, wrong way. We'll be pushing back just a second. JD Bear says he can't push back. He'll try to be official. Let me see. Are we clear? Uh, not te technically, we're not clear. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to push back out of this. Let me see. We're, we're kind of we're kind of cramped in here. I'm gonna do my best not to hit anybody. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to be legit today. By the way, I want to go ahead and mention, guys, that these little lines on the side are not taxiways. I repeat, they are not taxiways. And I want to stop right there, right before we hit them. Like freaking aircraft carrier tight out here. Okay. Starting engine two. Set our transponder. Two two zero zero will be our actually two two five zero. But we'll squawk today. We get the engine firing up now. And beacon lights already on. Engine two is firing up. Into's riding, passing 30% into. Would you guys like me to go first? I can go first. Or you can go ahead, whichever. Whoever's ready can go ahead and go. Uh, will I be streaming 20.2 when it comes out for Infinite Flight? Uh, I don't know yet. We'll see. Oh, yeah. I love that sound. Love that sound. Alright, Engine 2 is fired up and ready to go. Sorry, Engine 2. 1. Just from outside.
Oh boy. <laughs> Baby. Oh yes. Yes, we are on VAT Sim today, my friend. Alright, let me go ahead and move out of the way because somebody's right behind me. Uh left engine, I think we have a good start. Like a quick flaps, park and brake. That's already off. And uh we'll two taxi lights. Alright, let's go. I guess I'll be first. And yes, we are on VATSIM, call sign A and A, Uno Uno Seis. Alright, what runway is this? This is oh obviously eight. Uh Hachi Jomo? Hachi 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 <laughs> I was gonna say Hachi Uh is there a plane over there? Is are we clear? Let's see if we're clear. Clear on the right, it looks like. Yeah. Hachichi traffic, A and A one one to six. Back taxi on way eight for departure. Hachichi traffic. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it, so I'm just gonna say Hachichi. They know what I'm talking about. There's no other place out here called Hachichi. <laughs> They're like, oh, is he talking about Hachichi whatever? Yeah, yeah, you know. All right, lights. Whenever you're taxiing on the runway, always turn your lights on. That includes your strobes and landing lights. Look at that, it says it right there. Hot chicha mo. Hot chicha something. That's cool. Yes, we are using the TCA size stick. We always use a TCA size stick when we're flying Airbus. So, yes, sir, we are. I don't have the camera set up today, so. You have to deal with my face. Listen to that sound. Oh boy. Uh, the sound pack I'm using is technically not free. It's uh, it's a Patreon. So FT Sim has a Patreon account, and if you are a Patreon at any level, you get all of his sound packs, which include this one. Uh, he has a 787 sound pack he just made um, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. He also has a ton. He's like, like a ton of sound packs for X Plane. Uh, that's the sound packs that I was using before in X Plane. So check him out. Definitely recommend it. Uh, again, all his stuff is technically free, except you have to be a Patreon. And Patreon is super cheap. I think it's like, I don't know, a couple dollars. Alright, the wind is going the other direction for some reason, but it gave us runway 8, so we'll just back taxi here. Come on, keep turning. Yeah, I always get stuck halfway. Uh, lock the cabin doors. Alright, hold on, man. Hold on. Give me a second. Is it the, uh, ups, up, is it, is it a button? How do I do it? You guys gotta tell me how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Oh, let me move my... Oh, don't go for it. There we go. I have a limited space or leg room <laughs> under my desk. And sometimes my my rudder pedals are too far ahead and it actually hits the wall when I'm trying to turn. This is going to be a beautiful departure. It's definitely worth it, in my opinion. I've been the Patreon of his for quite a long time. All right, there we go. All right, how do I do this thing you guys keep telling me to do? Something about setting, locking the cabin door. Is it this one over here? Is it this button or is it a different button? Is it the overhead one? Is it one of these? I don't know what these buttons do. Since snow goes ding ding, <laughs> that's all I know that it does. All right, I don't know how to do it. Cockpit door switch down to lock overhead cabin crew. Hit the FWD attend button. Okay, I just hit that. Oh, forward. I got you. Okay, is it? Does it say something over here? No, it doesn't. All right, we're ready to go. All right, guys. Sound on.
Thank you guys for waiting over there. I appreciate that. Now right, here comes rotate. A little bit of right rudder. Easy, positive climb, gear up. Where's my button? I should have set it up earlier, sorry. Dang it. It's my nice landing, by the way. Wow, my nose was way the heck up there. <laughs> Trying to mess with the views. Alright, pushing the nose down. We're going to bring the throttle back to throttle walk climb. Did I say throttle climb? There's throttle climb. Oh. Where's throttle climb? We're at the A floor. We do not want to be at the A floor and climb. That is a bad place to be. Ah, I forgot the auto brakes too. Oh well. Too late now. I was too worried about locking the forward doors. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go autopilot so we can enjoy the flight out. Look at that. This is what we should have saw yesterday. What up, CJ? Beautiful island of Hachichi. Next stop, Kushiro, or Coach Koshiro. Look at the volcano. I definitely look like a volcano. Let's put those flaps up. Look at the shadowing in here. Oh, a citation. See? See what would happen if we had fighter jets? <laughs> Imagine that. Alright, let's clean things up real quick. How are we looking on our climb? Climb is at 5,000. We're completely on VNAV right now. Uh, Autopilot is completely in control. We'll go ahead and hit uh, Engage Managed. So that means that the MCP will go ahead and start managing that. We'll go ahead and zoom out here on our map. We can turn the weather radar on, and uh, hopefully it'll work. I'm not sure if it'll work or not. Unarm the spoilers. Oh, we never turned off our uh, APU. Our APU's coming off now. APU please coming off. And how high are we? We are 6,000. We'll leave the land lights on for a little bit longer. I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, raise our altitude to our cruise. Since we don't have any ATC to tell us to stop, we'll go straight to 36,000. Again, today's flight's going to be about an hour, 15 to an hour and a half. Uh, depends on the winds. We should be okay. We do have a headwind, though, uh, at the moment of four knots. But it's climbing really nice. Look at that. Only climbing at 2,400 feet. Uh, remember yesterday, we didn't have our line, our GPS line. We got that back, but I think that's because of the... Uh, the NX mod, I think they fixed that because there has been no Microsoft update. So that's fixed. We got our flight director that's actually guiding us where we're supposed to be guiding, which is nice. Yeah, I'm really I'm really liking this. I'm really like it's like what would the flight sim community do without the NX crew? You know what I mean? Like, oh my god. Like a day after the release, they already have a hot fix for the NX. What up, XP? Good to see you, man. Welcome back to the stream, bro. Same for CJ. Michael Washington, what up, man? Look at that beautiful sunrise departure. I'm running live weather today. Um, I 
have not seen anything about the Rex weather engine being updated yet. I know that they're working on it, they're testing it, is what the last thing I saw. Uh, I'm still kind of on the fence about it, to be honest. I mean, this is our live weather, it's not always accurate, but I mean, when it works, it works well, I feel like. And I mean, at the airport, it was clear skies, and now we've flown into some partly skies over the water south of, uh, out south of the island of Japan. Yes, Allen Farms, I did hear that the next world update is going to be USA, so excited about that. Uh, CJ says, within hours. Yes, you're right, bro. Within hours, they had the NX updated. I think that I missed out on it on my stream, but I think some other people were already streaming the update, which is pretty freaking sick how soon they were able to get that out. And in my opinion, it works so much better <laughs> than the updated version. Uh, because, you know, the other day when we flew the A320, I was having such a hard time. Let me turn the sounds down a bit. I was having such a hard time flying in freaking IFR with no IFR controls <laughs> and then I uh, saw the NX fixed all that stuff so it was pretty dope man I'm pretty pretty happy about that I watched the Q&A session yesterday too uh, answered a lot of our questions they said that they want to uh, they want to support the NX project in any way they can what that means we don't know um, but I think it'd be pretty darn cool to be able to access updates for the NX through the marketplace if that's possible look at that man oh my god that's beautiful how are we doing? Are we, are we descending? Okay, no, we're just leveling off at 10,000. I think that's our altitude restriction at the moment. But yeah, man, super excited about that. I, I was kind of worried we are going to have to wait like a week <laughs> or something like that. So I'm hoping that all the other modified airplanes uh, also catch up, like the 787 project, the 747, the citations, all those. So super dope, man. Yeah, waiting on an update for Rex. Um, I like it. I do. I like the thing. The thing about Rex, I like. I like it around the airport that I'm landing and taking off at. Uh, the winds in route are supposed to be better too, and they have been for me. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I'm still on the fence about it. I just. I, I only got to do like a few flights because I bought it. What the day before the the update. <laughs> so, you know, I only got to use it for like one day, so I didn't really get to fly that much. So I only did a few flights with it. So there's a few things that I liked, a few things I didn't like. The one thing I will say I didn't like was I didn't like how you could actually see the weather changing. Uh, like, you, like right in front of you, you see clouds like slowly disappearing, uh, which I, just, I personally didn't like. I kind of like how Microsoft is supposed to work, where like, hey, in this area, it's partly cloudy. In this area, it's clear. In this area, it's storm. So from like 20, 30, 50 miles away, you can see out in the distance that, hey, we have some overcast skies way out there, you know? Uh, and you can actually fly there. With Rex, it's like, it's just like, I don't know. It, I don't know, it didn't seem to work that way. Uh, you can actually see Mount Fuji all the way from out here. Look at that. It's crazy how far you can see Mount Fuji. What a breaking Jow removed ladies and gentlemen from their vocabulary of cabin crew. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, just says that something's under the armrest. What do you, what do you ask? What are you telling me? This thing? Oh, the cockpit door is open. Does that work? Oh, okay. Never pressed that button. I mean, it's not actually open. It's closed. Is it? Can I open this door? Can I open this door? No, I can't open that door. Okay. So it's just like a button to press. Okay, I got you. I'm like, uh, can I open that door? Like, is that a thing? When did that happen? Sweet. Look at this inside interior view right now. I think this is such a, a dope view with the sun hitting the side of the, uh, of the, of the windshield. Uh, are we still stopped at 10,000? Uh, hello, VNAF. Uh, let's see, Mo is, I believe Mo is the end of our departure. Let me see if, if there's an altitude restriction holding us at 10,000. If not, we're going to go ahead and, and climb. No, there are no, there's only a couple altitude restrictions and there's, there's at or above 4,000. So let's go ahead and climb. What are you doing? Thank you very much. Wasting time right now, chilling at 10,000 feet. We should be there. 
They should simulate hijack if you leave it open. You know what, G Slayer? You should create that plugin. <laughs> you you should. You should create that. Alright, let's go ahead and standard. I actually allow hijacking comments. Hey, it's what people think. Tell me you never thought about hijacking a plane. Not like really hijacking one, but never tell me you never thought about random scenarios like that in your flight sim experience. I mean, obviously that would be extremely, extremely rare, right? But, I mean, we already simulate feeding people, right? So what's the difference of simulating hijacking? I wouldn't do it. I'm just saying I know other people do it. It's not the first time it came up. I'm not doing it today. <laughs> I'm just saying if you want to see that in the sim, create it. So yeah, look at that, man. So flying away from some partly, or actually kind of overcast, I don't say broken, broken overcast skies behind us, and now we're over some clear. So like if I was using Rex, which again, I'm not talking down on Rex, I'm just saying the few things that I've noticed, the way that Rex would simulate that is they would go from, it would just basically change the entire preset of, the, of what you're flying in. So I don't know that you can fly in two different settings at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Now you guys can correct me, I've only done a few flights, but from the few flights that I did, that's what I was... Look at that huge volcano, holy crap, that's massive. So again, we are south of Tokyo right now. We're actually going to fly, our flight plan is going to lead us right over Tokyo on the way to the northern part of Japan, which we haven't, we haven't been there yet. Uh, our first flight was from Nagasaki to Tokyo, and that flight was all, obviously like the whole so southern part of Japan, which is really nice, very beautiful. Um, and then yesterday we did a flight from Tokyo to where we just left from, which is uh, Hachichojima. Look at that, oh my god. And today, we've overflying Tokyo on our way to the northernmost part of Japan. Holy crap, look at that volcano. Holy crap. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So let's talk about this USA world update that we may be getting in, I don't know, the next coming months. Um, I would predict we may get it by, what's it, uh, maybe end of November, maybe December, maybe even a New Year's update, something like that. Um, no sooner, but I mean, think about some of the stuff in the U.S. that is missing currently, like Washington, D.C. currently looks like crap, right? The monuments, stuff like that is not there. I assume that's going to come with it. Uh, I'm sure New York will probably get a retouch. New York isn't bad. I think New York is great, but it might get a retouch. Um, I think some of the mountainous areas will get a retouch to look even better. I think they look great now. Like, I'm, it's hard for me, honestly, to even think about how much better the U.S. can look in some areas. I know some areas will look bad. Like, it's a part of my hometown in Houston. It's like the west side, I think. Uh, and other people from my area have complained about it. It's like very low quality. So maybe they'll, they'll fix things like that, hopefully. Because I know that you can get good quality imagery over there. They just don't have it in the current sim. So I think areas like that, where the quality isn't that great, it'll be updated. But also cities that aren't that great. Like, for example, the ones that I've seen are Dallas, Honestly, that's the only one I can think of right now. Uh, but Dallas, Texas, which is actually one of the biggest cities in Texas. You know, Houston's big, Austin. Austin's very well modeled. San Antonio is very well modeled. But Dallas, which is one of the bigger cities in, in Texas, looks like crap. So I'm thinking like cities like that all over the, all over the U.S. will get retouches. Um, and look at that Mount Fuji out there in the distance. Just looking at it. Just watching. Just out there scheming. Look at, look at the Mount Fuji. Um, yes, Vegas uh, probably get a better look. Honestly, L.A., could be better i know you guys flown in la and i i definitely feel that la can be done better than it is it looks pretty good from far up but when you get lower those trees look ridiculously bad um but i think la can be done better so yeah dc la uh, again new york looks pretty good already um dallas again i haven't flown a ton in the u.s since microsoft has come out i've been trying to stay away from the u.s because all of my x-plane flights are always in the u.s so I was like, huh, all right, now I have the entire globe of ortho, a brand new ortho I can check out. So I've been hanging out everywhere but the U.S. personally, so I haven't been out there much. All right, we're at 15,000. This thing is really creeping its way up, isn't it? Really creeping its way up. Maybe we should just go ahead and like, like hey, just uh, 
hurry up and get to 36. And when we get there, then you can do your thing. Let's see if that'll help. We'll go to OP climb. All right, that looks better. All right, hopefully we don't uh, stall. San Francisco, you guys are saying out of date? I mean, everything is out of date. I mean, if you think about it, you can't have like yesterday's ortho ready today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of impossible. You might be asking too much. But yeah, I mean, I'm not from San Francisco. I've been there a few times, but I haven't been there enough to know that it's out of date. So if it's out of date, maybe they'll update it. Um, the question is, this new data that they're getting, like for Japan or for the US, that's coming up soon, uh, how recent is that data taken, right? Is it from like last year? Is it from this year? You know, because it's satellite imagery. Like, when did that satellite take that photo? Like, I'm, I'm, I highly doubt it was in the last six months. Maybe it was. Maybe in the last six months. But anything close to that, I really doubt. Orlando does already look pretty good. You know what? Actually, actually, Orlando looks good. But outside of Orlando, like over there by uh, where the, the spaceships launch, that area needs work. Uh, we flew over there one day, and I was like, man, you're missing all the darn launch pads. Because uh, I'm used to Orbix True Earth Florida, and it has all that, all those POIs and stuff like that over there in Florida. The thing is, the, like... Japan is is so small. Maybe not, but I feel like Japan is so small in comparison to the US. There's so many things. How can they possibly do a world update to bring in all the leg the, the really cool POIs or points of interest for the US? I mean, you have the whole city of Washington, D.C. that needs to be redone. You have areas in Florida that need to be done. You have a whole city of Dallas that needs to be done. LA needs to be redone. Um, you have, what else? Um, shoot, what else is like iconic in the US I'm trying to think you guys can point some stuff out have I tried the new neo fly bush pilot mission freeware no that sounds like fun I have not Grand Canyon actually I haven't been there yet in the sim I've been, I really haven't how how the heck have I not been there I have not been to the Grand Canyon yet in the sim so I don't know how bad it looks yet but if you say it looks bad then I guess it needs to work too uh, Seattle, Seattle shouldn't need any more work. I mean, Seattle was like their, their, their key. It's like their main flagship city for the whole sim. But yeah, USA is gonna be a massive update, and that's gonna be like a free. Like, I mean, Japan was how big? Two gigabytes, or one point something gigabytes? I don't know how big the US update is gonna be. That's gonna be massive, man. Vegas definitely needs some work. Vegas is a big one. Niagara Falls, yes, Mr. Music. Niagara Falls is is looking sketchy right now. Looking, these clouds look great. Look at that. Oh my God, he just banked on us. A and A just banked on us. Oh, she's showing off. She know we taking pictures of her. Yeah, somebody did make an add-on um, to adjust it. So hopefully they'll incorporate that into the update. That'd be pretty dope. Is it weird that I don't even want to turn music on yet? I'm just enjoying how this plane looks. Like, this is me for an entire flight, just spinning in circles, looking at every angle I can possibly look at <laughs> when I'm flying in this sim. I'm really enjoying this sound pack, too. It's like another volcano down there. A volcano island. Uh, yes, Niagara Falls is half in the U.S. and half in Canada. That is correct. I believe one side of Niagara Falls is U.S. and one side is Canada. How am I controlling my drone camera with my PlayStation 4 controller? Here it is right here. Can you guys see it? Yeah, this is the controller I'm using. Oh, it is disconnected. And it froze. Oh, God. I hope I don't crash. Come back to me, baby. Come back to me. You can see it has this little... You can't see it, but it's like... It's like torn, the connection. So it always disconnects super easy. Oh, it crashed. Don't crash. Okay, it's back. Oh, thank God. Uh, oh, yes. Atlanta probably needs some work. I, I don't know. I haven't, been, I haven't really checked out the Atlanta as a city. I think I did. I think Atlanta City has the being geo-referenced stuff. They could probably be updated. Um, this, the airport, we really need an Atlanta airport. I'm pretty sure somebody's working on it that hasn't announced it yet, but Atlanta really needs an airport. Did I forget Sim Toolkit Pro? 
I might, let me see. No, it's running. Yeah, it's running. Okay, I just don't have it up on the screen for you guys. Hold on. I will give you guys that. Where is it? Where is it? Flight? Oh, it is up there. It's up. Wait, why is it not tracking though? That's weird. Something's not right. Huh, I wonder why it's doing that. Yeah, it says it's tracking. Actually, no, it does not say it's tracking. Can I reset it? Is that possible? Let me see. I always like to know what my ET is, and that's that's what Sim Toolkit does for me. It helps me out with that. Hey, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it might be too maybe too far in the flight now to fix that. Let me see if I can update it though. I feel it will catch up. Maybe, maybe not. We'll give it a second and see. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We'll be good to go. Uh, when is the PMDG 737 supposed to come out? Uh, sometime at the end of 2021. They pushed it back by nine months. Broke our hearts when they did it. Broke our hearts. I don't even want to talk. I don't want to. I don't even want to discuss it. I don't want to talk about PMDG right now. Novus, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Boston, does Boston need work? I thought Boston looked pretty good. Yes, this is the fly-by-wire A320NX. What up, Jaden? Good to see you, man. Welcome to the stream. Welcome back. All right, we should be reaching our top of the climb here. Or not. This thing's taking a sweet time to climb. I'm going to change the speed that it does it. Maybe that'll... Yep, there we go. Let's go down to 285. So now it's going to pitch for 285. And we'll get to 360 faster. We should have been climbing by now. Or we should have been uh, cruising by now. I need to talk to XP. He said he found some kind of way. Him or CJ, one of you guys, said you found a way uh, to, to adjust these cameras. I have I found a way a while back. I don't know that it still works. So I want to find out what your way is of doing it because I want to I want to try it. Just finished your homework, dope, bro. That's amazing. Henry Harris, welcome to the stream, man. What's up, man? Is there anyone making an A350? Yes, somebody said that they're making an A350. Uh, if they're making it right, we won't. If they're making it right, we probably won't see it until next year. I don't see how somebody can make an A350 right and it come out this year. Because it sounded like whoever did it just started. So we'll see. It just seems like the wait for airliners is, is longer than we want it to be. That's what it seems like. Flight Sim Master. What up, man? Welcome to the stream. Welcome back. Yeah, my whole Sim Toolkit thing is not working at all. So I'm just going to turn it off. Nick Melee, what up, man? Welcome to the stream. Bam, bam. We'll go ahead and turn that off, too. Yeah, like the wing view just doesn't do it. Here we go. Back over Tokyo. I think this is Tokyo. I believe this is Tokyo. Yeah, this is Tokyo. <laughs> Where's the airport? Uh, GA flight tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. Tomorrow we're doing GA. Uh, there's a few uh, small bush strips that they have out here in Tokyo that they created that are handcrafted as well. So we'll be going to check those out. I'm not sure what plane we're going to fly yet. What would you guys prefer? Do you want to fly like an actual bush plane? Uh, something faster? It kind of depends on how far we need to go. 
If we have a long distance to go, I don't want to fly anything super slow like a cub. Alright, there's a an Ada over there. Uh, tomorrow's flight, we should start earlier tomorrow. Was it Friday? Yeah, we should start earlier tomorrow. Probably my usual time around. I think at 15, 15.30 Zulu. Yo, look at that low fog. Sick. I look how the, the buildings are actually cutting through the, uh, the clouds right now in Tokyo. That's sick. Like a low, like a very low, foggy cloud layer. Says in 208, maybe. I need to look into what airports so we can fly into. Uh, what handcrafted um, bush airports they created. Probably do something like some island hopping or something like that. What up, Keith? You say you suck at following. Are you the one in the citation? <laughs> But yeah, once we get the cruise, we we'll probably still have about 45, 35 minutes to go. So we got a ways to go, guys. It's about an hour and a half long, especially now that we've took forever to get to our cruise. And we're still climbing. Oh my God, what are you doing? All right, so this is what's happening. We're gonna do vertical speed. So I know we can get better performance than this. All right, give me as fast as you can go at 2,200 feet per minute, please. I've had to 25. Uh, no, today we are not using Rex. Uh, we're waiting for Rex to update. I still want to do some more comparisons of, of which I like better, which I prefer. I mean. I just want the default Microsoft Flight Simulator weather engine to just work correctly. That's all I want. I want the weather to be correct. <laughs> That's all I want. No problem, Mr. Music. I'll see you tomorrow, my friend. Thanks for stopping by, bro. I do appreciate that. Yeah, tomorrow, we'll do some GA bush flying or bush ish <laughs> flying. Currently flying over Tokyo, Japan, en route to Kushiro in the north. I like this. I, yeah, it's dope. <laughs> I like this. I will say though, the difference between Rex weather and the default weather is actually very different. It's very different. I was uh, flying with somebody else early, uh, earlier in the week before the update and they didn't have Rex. I did. Flying the exact same route, same time of day, live weather, all that stuff. And uh, their winds aloft were very different. Um, their visual, de visually depicted weather was very different. There's Mount Fuji again in the background. JD's off my right side. Sounds good. Avia is voting for the Piper Cub. You know I love that plane. Some of the Savage, right? John Doe, what up, man? Good to see you. Welcome to stream, bro. Welcome back. Oh, look at that. Hold on, let me, let me, where is it? Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Ah, I missed it. I can't find the angle. I'm gonna find it. Give me a second. Tail draggers are annoying. I love tail draggers. They are annoying if you don't, if you're not used to flying them. All right, never mind. Kachow, kachow. What is that? 
I see the little longitude below us. I think it's a longitude. Yes, Patriot, Patri Patriot Ninja, we are on live weather right now. So as we get farther north, uh, according to my weather radar, um, not on the sim, but we should be flying into some pretty overcast, rainy, not so good looking weather uh, once we get off uh, towards the waters. Right now we're flying over, like I said, Tokyo. Uh, we'll be flying up the island a little bit. Once we get off away from the island and over the ocean, uh, we'll probably should see, should see more water. I mean, sorry, more uh, clouds. Though we're pretty far away from that right now. Uh, this is uh, the A320 NX 0.31, I believe. I just downloaded it today, so it should be 0.1. Check our speed. Man, this thing is taking a sweet time. Yeah, we're at 29,000. Like, it's really struggling to get to 36,000 feet for some reason. I don't know why. Daniel, what up, man? Good to see you. Welcome back, bro. Like, we should have been cruising like 100 miles ago. Latin VFR released San Diego scenery today. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let me go. Let me go look for this. <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see it. What up, Jonathan? Welcome to the stream, man. Welcome back. I need to see this this uh, this San Diego. I actually did really like the uh, Miami scenery they did. I really did like it. So I'm curious now how well they did. Give me a second to find it. While we're still climbing. Up, 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 up. Thank you, Radio Man. Appreciate that, bro. That means a lot, man. I do appreciate that so much, bro. Thank you, bro. All right, let's see. Is this it? That's not it. Where is it at? How do I find this information? Can you post it on my Discord or something? I want to see this Latin VFR. Maybe I have to Google, I have to Google it? I'll just Google it. Uh, Jonathan, when am I going to do another Infinite Flight stream? I do not know. <laughs> oh no, Carlos. <laughs> he says, nice to see you again. Do not open the VFR map. Just lost a 10-hour flight. Oh, bro, that sucks. That sucks. I can't I can't find this Latin VFR uh K San. You wanna help me? Somebody somebody's gonna have to post it to the Discord. Wait, I might have just found it. I might have just found it. Is this P3D? It's just like P3D. Yeah, this is P3D. So yeah, this, wait, wait, wait a second. It says MSFS. 
No, it says MSFSX. That's not. Yeah, this, this is not it. So send me the link of the Microsoft Flight Simulator version of uh, San Diego, because I don't see it. Look at those clouds. Oh my god. Like some of it's like puffy, some of it's like swooshy. And just a rhyme. Got a Fuji out there too. ATP Flight School USA. I heard that the, heard the owner went out with a blast. The Americans left the same night. No idea what that means. It went right over my head. <laughs> You're flying from FAOR to EDDF because of VFR map. You crashed the desktop. That sucks. Yeah, I've been staying away from that map since uh, yesterday. We had a we had one crash in yesterday's stream. The day before we had three crashes. And I don't think that I actually opened up the VF farm, but I think it just crashed just because it likes crashing. So I'm not really sure what happened there. But today I'm, I'm avoiding the VF farm app, and uh, so far so good. Let's not jinx it, but so far so good. Am I not climbing? Am I really not? Do I need to just level off here? Is that what this plane wants to do? Yeah, you're right. We're not climbing. We're just hanging out at 30. At 29,000 feet. It's like going up like 300 feet and then leveling off 300 feet, level off. Ah, what is going on? I was gonna let I out apologize, do your thing, bro. Just do your freaking thing. I'm only running 69% in one. Like, do I need to manually climb it? I haven't gone as high yet since I've been flying since the update. I've only gone as high as 26,000, so I haven't had this problem. FS Elite? Alright, I'll check out FS Elite page. No problem, Carlos. I'm glad to have you in the jump seat, bro. Do I have a cryogenic bed in A10? Wait, in an A10 hour flight? <laughs> that sounds crazy. Milton 12, hello, good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you, Sam Keely. I'm glad you enjoyed our animal spotting streams. Those were a lot of fun. Those were a lot of fun. <laughs> Keith, the auto pilot tried to kill you three times the other day. Yeah, it, other day it did the same for me. I was trying to land, I was descending. Uh, and I had an altitude restriction at 6,000 feet, so I was going down to 6,000. My autopilot said 6,000, and when we got to 6,000, it just kept going. And it was it, if I had not taken control, it would have flown us all the way down to the water, because I was flying over water. Engage, manage altitude. That's what we're on right now. It's not climbing at all now. It's not even speeding up. I don't know what's going on with this thing. I've tried OP. Let's see, expedite. Nope, it does nothing. Engage, selected out two mode. Now it's on OP climb. I don't know, I've actually never had this problem. Let's see what this Latin VFR San Diego looks like. It's on here. There it is. Latin VFR releases San Diego Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So it's just the airport. Is it the city too or just the airport? Uh, I know that's one of the airports I definitely needed some touch. <laughs> I needed a touch and go. Uh, let's see. Handmade and detailed PBR ground markings. Yeah, we know that. Realistic, that, blah, blah, blah. Optimized, cool. Customized jetway, okay. Downtown San Diego enhanced to include buildings with PBR materials with awesome realistic night lighting. Oh, okay, you got my attention. Landable USS Midway, which is an aircraft carrier, we know that, and a museum. Uh, accurate airport gate parking, okay. Special discount for those who purchased the San Diego uh, V2 for FSX or P3D. Obviously, I don't have that, so that, that sucks for me. Uh, but yeah, this looks like a, a must have. I mean, again, based off of my experience with Latin VFR Miami, I would recommend Latin VFR Miami. It's actually very well done. So I assume, I can only assume that Latin VFR San Diego uh, would be just as good. Plus it includes some uh, extra objects in the city, which doesn't hurt. 
I'm looking at screenshots now. I don't have it on the screen for you guys, but go check it out. Matter of fact, I'll give you guys a link right now on uh, the chat. There it is. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. And the screenshots looks pretty good. We'll have to see it in person. So I like it. I don't see any screenshots of the city though. It only shows screenshots of the airport. Oh, right, there it is. Yeah, that's it's gonna be that's gonna be a buy. Probably gonna have to buy that. All right, uh, it's doing nothing. It's it's done nothing at all. Looks handsome. Oh, I'm looking handsome. Thank you. <laughs> Daniel, hello from Costa Rica. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Hola. So right now we're kind of uh, fighting this plane. Uh, it is finally trying to go faster. I'm trying to. F Maybe it's my throttle lever. Let me see. There we go, throttle climb. Maybe that was a problem. It was on throttle lever, not throttle climb. So let's see if it does anything different. Okay, cool. I think that was a problem. Now it's the inner one is now actually responding to the auto uh, or to the VNAV. Yep, okay. So that was the issue. I was in throttle uh, lever and not throttle climb. I think whenever I was moving the lever on, tight, on takeoff, I didn't move it enough to get it into that next notch for throttle climb. Beautiful. Geofly has been getting some great reviews. What is Geofly? What is that? FOB Ryan, what up, man? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream, man. Welcome back, bro. Is there a way to put Simbrief flight plan straight into the MCDU through game files? Yes, JD Bear. Uh, you need to put it in your local state. So go find your Microsoft Flight Simulator folder and uh, which I can't really show you where it is right now but um, look for a, a folder called local state inside that folder you should see missions weather uh, just drop it in there it should be a, a, a I think it's a dot flt or dot pln yeah dot pln file you can get that straight from simbrief and put that in there and that'll load up on your world map and then you can load it like that all right so I think we got that figured out There's so much beauty in Japan, man. It's crazy how beautiful this island is. It just amazes me, man. Like, ah, uh, like, if you guys have been around the channel long enough, you know that one thing I love is tropical areas with, uh, with mountains. Like, this is why I love Puerto Rico, because it's an island right next to the water, not too far from the beach. I know Japan's a lot bigger, so it'll take you a lot longer, depending on where you live, to get to the beach, but like with Puerto Rico, is right on the on the you know on the water. It's an island. There's a beach. There's there's some very, really nice mountains to go hiking. You know, uh, the weather is always nice. I'm not sure what the weather is like in Japan, but I mean it's a beautiful place. Look at this. Like no wonder. Like this is a great place for like like ninjas to <laughs> to train. I mean that might sound like really off way I said that, but you know what I'm saying. Like I just. I understand why the movies are the way they are when you look at the geography out here. Alright, there's those clouds I talked about up ahead. Um, some storms should be up ahead of us. Geofly is the Bush Pilot Mission add-on. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I need to send me that on Discord so I don't lose it. So I don't, so I don't forget. Sounds like fun. Nice, you lived here for two years. Amazing country and people. That's amazing, bro. That's cool. That's pretty cool. I've never been to Japan. I've never been anywhere close to Japan. Uh, I would love to go here someday. Would love to go here someday. Speaking of that, man, I miss traveling. I do. I do. The last place I went to was Puerto Rico to see my sister-in-law. She had her baby, which was cool. That was nice. It wasn't really a vacation, uh, but it was nice. To kind of get out, get out of, get away from home, be able to travel. I still need to post the videos for the landings and the trip and all that. All the bamboo forests are beautiful. I wonder if that's simulated. Like, I wonder if 
if I get close to the ground and see the trees, if the trees are like bamboo trees and not just regular trees. Derp, what up, man? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Ferg rules. Welcome to the stream, man. What up, man? Fly to the island of Tsushima, like from the game Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> Is that a real place? But uh, Ferg rules. Welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you. Welcome back. There's so much land, like I don't know if we could even fly all of this in a GA plane. Okay, so we fixed that. So now we have finally reached our cruise. I do apologize for that. That's gonna set us back a decent amount of time. It's a good thing we only have one flight planned today. Um, but on my radar, it's showing we have a 262, uh, sorry, 56 knot wind, uh, crosswind from the left at 261. Uh, I want to see if I can figure out how to get this weather. Anybody know how to work the weather radar in this plane? Do I just set it to weather, or is there anything I need to do specifically? Specifically, let me know. Because we should start seeing weather draw on our radar here in a little while. Maybe a little farther out, but. Uh, I don't play Call of Duty Mobile. I do play Call of Duty on PC though. Why does it suddenly look like Infinite Flight? It does. If you take the clouds away, it does actually look like Infinite Flight. I was mentioning that the other day. I was like, this looks just like Infinite Flight if you turn the clouds off from like 30,000 feet. You funny, Trippy. Bro, this, this, that, this that good ortho right here, bro. This that, uh, this that being that ortho. <laughs> System one. All right, hold on. Why would it not already be there? Like. Come on, bro. Ah, bro, you just freaking saved my life. I've been trying to figure that out all week. So system one, weather and turbulence, and then PWS has to be on. Now we can see that there's some storms up ahead, some pretty nasty stuff too. Look at all that red. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Who was that? That was uh, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. And Tino. Thank you guys. Uh, is there an IRLS or localizer frequency? No, we're landing on the RNAV from 835, so no localizer frequency. No, sir. Usually about a $640 round trip from LAX to Manila. That doesn't sound bad at all. That doesn't sound, that's a pretty good price for that flight. Uh, do I like the 2021 TLX, TLX Type S? Uh, what is that exactly? What, what, is that a car? It sounds like a car. What car is that? Uh, Tsushima is between South Korea and Japan. All right. I would open my VFR map right now and look, but that would be a sin. <laughs> so we're not gonna do that. It's gonna keep taking in this Japanese scenery. Let me see. I, I do want to at least open up Sim Toolkit so I can know where the heck we are. Thank you, Amro Muhammad. Thank you very much for that subscription. Welcome to the Blue Air Royal family, man. Glad to, glad to have you. Welcome aboard. A Sim Toolkit Pro has just entered the chat. Let's see if this will connect. It'd be kind of cool if it did connect in the mid-flight. I doubt it, but it'd be nice. Oh, I see me. Is that me? No, that's not me.
Weather's not that bad out there, but we should have a few scattered showers on the way in. Uh, our top of the scent, somebody was asking me earlier, it's going to be right after Hokto Waypoint. Uh, do I know if the new Xbox Series will support Microsoft Flight Simulator? I don't know for sure. I know that they said that they're working on optimizing the sim for Xbox in general. So I assume that if they get it working for the regular Xbox, like the current Series Xbox, that it should also work for the next gen Xbox 2. That is my prediction, but that has not been confirmed. Speaking of things confirmed, so again, we, we learned yesterday in the Q&A that the, uh, we're getting, the next world update is going to be in the USA. Uh, we also learned in the Q&A Q, Q that VR is coming and they're testing it. They're actually going to test it. Uh, man, look at those clouds. Oh my god. They're low too, like right next to the mountain. That is just freaking beautiful. Um, we also learned that they're going to try to go back to a beta testing system, which I thought they were going to do in the first place. And they need to do. They even admitted to the fact that they rushed out the last two updates. And that is the reason why we got so many bugs. And they didn't have a full testing team. They got like 40 people or something like that. Maybe 400. That's our. I think it's like 40 people, 400, something, I don't know. They don't, per, per, the point is they don't have enough testers. Uh, and they're basically internally testing these updates before they come out, which we know is not good. They need to be closed beta or open beta like how we had before the sim came out to really get these things fixed before they go to the you know the wide audience. Um, so they're going back to that, um, to that functionality later on. I'm not sure when they're gonna start that. Hopefully I can get back in on that. I was in the, er, the, in the alpha before so I they said they told us that if you had alpha or beta before that you're supposed to be in again when I do it again I don't know if that's true that's what we were told back then so hopefully that's still true and I can still you know participate in the in the next phase of beta testing before the updates come out so uh, they also talked about their release schedule of updates because like there's a lot of things are breaking in these updates and they've been doing like a two-week uh, time frame for the updates. The issue with that is that we go two weeks with broken with a broken sim. Like, why not release a hot fix, fix the game breaking stuff, and then save the other extra smaller fixes for the major update? Um, so they talked about that, and they're going to be possibly switching to doing that. Uh, world words seven eight nine. What do the updates do? A lot of things. Uh, I would go to the website, bro, and uh, check out the the whole long list of updates. I can't really go through it with you right now. Um, but they change a lot of things in the sim. Uh, mainly bug, fi bug fixes, crash to desktop fixes. Oh man, look at that little, that chop of turbulence we just got there. Um, a lot of different stuff. All aspects of the sim. Uh, they're constantly updating. So honestly, watching the Q&A, it really made me respect the developers and their transparency. If you haven't seen the Q&A yet, definitely go on YouTube and check it out. Uh, it's like an hour long. You can kind of skim through it. Um, they talk about a lot of stuff, and I just like the, you know, I like that they're actually listening to community feedback. Um, they're addressing it, they're not hiding it, they're not avoiding it, but they're actually discussing it, talking about it live. Um, and it, it earns a lot of respect for me personally. It earns a lot of respect for me personally. I know I can complain a lot about the sim, um, but at the same time, I mean, they're human, right? Humans make mistakes, humans don't always make the right decisions. Um, they even talked about the Garmin. G1000 and how they're gonna actually start to um, add more functionality to it. Right now it's super shallow, it doesn't do very much, and what it does do, it doesn't do well. Um, so once they fix the bugs, they said they're gonna try to also make it like, you know, as simulated as they possibly can um, with most of the pages that exist in the real world. Uh, so that way that they don't have to expect third party developers to do it for them. Uh, and hopefully they'll do something similar with the uh, FMSs and MCDUs. Um, I don't really think they will, though. But it's just good kind of hearing their mindset, hearing their point of view on how things will be going on their side. And they admit to the mistakes they've made. They already admit, look at those clouds, uh, to like, you know, the discrepancies in the weather and different areas. So I'm glad they're not just like denying it and be like, oh, no, nothing's wrong with that. Um, Dylan, I'm running ultra settings right now, bro. bro. Like I said, I was just very impressed by the Q&A. I mean, 
obviously there's stuff that's still not in game, but they're working on stuff. Like for example, the most wanted feature by me specifically, replay mode. They mentioned replay mode, and how they are currently working on replay mode, bringing it to the sim. It's going to be in one of what they call the sim updates uh, at some point in the future. Uh, when that's going to be, we don't know, but they said it's like one of the higher priority features that they're working on. So, um, and then with that may come may may. Not confirmed, but may come the possibility for better shared cockpit um, stuff and other things like that. Yes, TCAS alert, traffic, traffic. Oh yeah, yeah, DX12 as well. Um, and, all, and with DX12, you'll be able to have like ray tracing, stuff like that. I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but um, it sounds like an upgrade, so I'm down. Look at that lightning down there. You see that lightning just happened down there? Uh, what kind of system do I recommend running for Microsoft Flight Simulator? Uh, the best you can get, man. Uh, best you can get. El Batpino, welcome to the stream, bro. From France, bonjour, ça va, with the cheese and the wine. Good to see you, man. No, but seriously, I don't know. Um, personally, I, I don't know, like, the specs I would recommend for uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I would, again, I would just say get the best you can. But do your research. Like, if you're looking to build a system specifically to run Microsoft Flight Simulator, like, do your research. You know, ask around just like you're doing now. Um, ask around on the forums. There's actually there are videos that have been made um, that talk about recommended uh, system specs for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So again, I would recommend checking those out on YouTube. Um, again, I'm not uh, I'm not a tech hardware kind of person. So I don't know much. Like, I, I, I couldn't tell you. When I when I got my PC made, I had to ask a bunch of professionals. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it just happened to work out. Oh my god, this these clouds are just freaking look at look how the clouds actually cast shadows on each other. And the ground. And look how like some of it's like puffy and in between is some like the, the smeary type. Like it's just uh I love the variety of clouds that are, are down there. It's so they're all low clouds too and in a few spots you see like mountains poking their heads out lee's aviation what up man thank you very much congrats on the 14k thank you bro uh you just hit 1000 well bro congratulations on that 1000 i remember i remember very clearly my first 1000 subscribers it was a huge deal it's still a huge deal to me every single thousand every single subscriber honestly is a huge deal to me the fact that you came here and you liked my stream or my content enough to actually hit the sub button is like a miracle in my opinion because I know how hard it is for me to hit a sub button it ain't easy for me to hit sub on somebody like see I don't just hit sub because somebody asked like I gotta like legit like their content and the person making it uh, for me to hit sub because I will I will I am the I am the person who will watch your videos for two three years before I hit sub that's me and I admit that and I know a lot of you guys who are watching whether you're watching live or watching the replay that's you too and again you know what i respect you because i am you and i am not upset about that because honestly subscribers don't even honestly mean that much right now i'm not saying you should go and unsub up sub me <laughs> what i'm saying is uh for those of you who are trying to grow youtube channels your sub count is really not the most important thing your subscription count is like a trophy right it's like it's like a, a recognition it's like you can tell people hey i have this many subscribers but outside of that and, and the reality of things doesn't matter as much as actual views and actual watch time. Um, because YouTube doesn't do ads on videos based on how many subs you have. It does it on based on how many views you're getting and how long people are watching that video. Nothing to do with subscribers. Matter of fact, you can have somebody with 50,000 subscribers and somebody with a hundred subscribers show up on the same featured page. Wow, that lightning was crazy. Uh, so this this let you guys know don't get too focused on sub count, right? It's good. One, if you get different perks at different levels. You get perks like um, super chat donations. You get perks like uh, being able to add a store to your webs to your thing, adding emojis, stuff like that. A different milestones so definitely celebrate it definitely appreciate every single sub that comes to your channel um don't let anybody go unnoticed for sure uh but in the big scheme of things when it comes to youtube and youtube growth subs are technically not the uh most important thing 
there's a lot of opportunities out there for smaller channels who have less subs and more views. You got me? Zachary, hola, welcome to the stream, man. Beautiful, yes it is. Esta bonita. Yeah, the cloud artist did a good job. Nice, JD Bear says he built his PC just a little bit over the recommended components and he's able to run 40 FPS. That is great, that is great. Daniel, Pura Vida from Costa Rica. Hola, my friend. Bienvenido, welcome to the stream, man. We'll be heading out to Costa Rica pretty soon. I already got a location. I already got a flight I want to do. And we're going to Costa Rica very soon. Max Cafula, welcome back, man. Good to see you. Yeah, the way the lightning, like, like lit up the sky was crazy. Uh, words, yes, I also agree. I hope we can walk around a cabin pretty soon. I I'm kind of, I'm hoping that, like, someday in the future that, like, even the A320 NX project would do similar to what Zebo did because if you guys think about it if you were here early enough not early enough if you have x plane 11 the default 737 does not have a, co a, a cabin it doesn't there's nothing there um and so Zebo, Zebo, the Zebo project added all that in there so you know a few months from now six months a year whatever this is gonna be a completely new plane if that project continues to flourish you know what I mean and I agree with that Zelda cum cum cumulonimbus it's so hard to say that word Cumulo nimbus clouds are really nice. <laughs> and yes, I have very high expectations, Lee. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. That thumbnail slaps. I love it. I love it. I agree, Lee. I 100% agree about that. And this, this is the thing. I truly believe. I truly believe. This is not me being cocky or big headed or anything like that. I truly believe that I could actually have more subs like maybe twice as many if I did some different some things differently like whenever somebody asks me like what would I give them for tips I usually tell them to take a different route than I did because I'm doing it the harder way because I stream Microsoft Flight Simulator I stream racing I stream trucking I stream uh, shooting sometimes you know uh, fighter jets you know I kind of jump around different types of games all within the simulator umbrella uh, but it's just I don't stick to this the one game every time or, or the same type of plane even um, And if I did I feel like I if I went with what people love or Let me see Basically what the people want, you know, not that I ignore what you want And I know I've, I've said this many times. It's not that I ignore what you guys want I know what you guys want. I know exactly what you guys want, but it's not always what I want and When you're streaming for a while you gotta mix in the stuff that you want to do and it's just stuff that you enjoy because people will people will recognize somebody who's streaming or, or recording content of stuff that they don't enjoy you know there's honestly there's, it's been like two or three reviews of planes that i've actually done and because i didn't like the plane so much i completely scrapped the video i was like you know what i don't even enjoy making this video i'm not going to waste my time making a bad review on the plane that somebody didn't spend enough time on I'm not even gonna mention who I did it for. I just was gonna say, as I've been a few planes that I was doing reviews for, and I was like, this plane is so like unenjoyable for me to fly. I'm not even gonna review it. Uh, and so, but obviously, I could have reviewed it. I could have gave it a bad, negative review. You know, negative stuff. Negative reviews attracts people, attracts followers, attracts subscriptions. But that's not what I'm about. I'm about positivity. Um, now, sometimes I might have to make that negative review. Like, for example, the C90 GTX, the Cessna 208EX. Those were both negative reviews um not because i wanted them to be but because they just were um, and so you just gotta you gotta go with your heart do what you love to do when you make a channel create it based on what you love to do if you start doing stuff you don't like to do you're gonna get burned out fast right and my goal is to be here for a very long time um that's just, that's just my thoughts my beliefs on that that's that's my mindset right now uh my fps right now uh let me see. I don't know. I'm trying to pull it up, but it's not pulling up. I don't know. I'll tell you whenever it pops up. Uh, El Batpino, El, El no, I did not inject this weather with uh, Rex. Uh, Rex is not updated yet. I'm looking forward to seeing what Rex looks like after the update. I know it's going to probably be the same, um, but I'm just looking forward to seeing it in more scenarios. I've only got to do a few flights with it. 
but uh, it's very smooth. Uh, I'm getting very minor stutters every once in a while. Uh, we do need to descend pretty soon. Look at that. Oh my god. Alright, so we're leaving uh, that part of the island that I was talking about where like the island stops. It actually continues around here. Um, but we're going to go be flying over the water for a little bit and we'll be landing back on the island. That's how our approach is going to go. So does the Fault 77 has a cabin? No, it doesn't, Dylan. I don't think it has a cabin. Does it have a cabin? Alan Farm says, stick to simming. Captain Canada made thousands a day from donations. <laughs> that's like daily for him, bro. That's, that's, that's a slow day. <laughs> for, that's a slow day for Captain Canada. A thousand donations. I've been to his streams before. It's like he can't even talk. He's getting so many donations. Play ETS2 with Reshade. You should try it. Uh, wow. I didn't know Reshade worked with uh, ETS2. That sounds like an interesting combo. I might have to try that. Thank you for the suggestion, Adam. Uh, also try Crew 2 if you want to see. I dropped out of the Crew 2 about edit. The Crew 2 edit 10 minutes ago. Uh, I don't have the Crew 2. I tried it. I like it, but I don't like it enough to, to buy it or stream it or play it again. I prefer Forza Horizon uh, when it comes to games of that type. Uh, no problem, Grimlock. I'll see you later, man. I don't want to go to developer mode, so we'll just leave it up. And uh, Lee, back on that subject about doing videos about different things, to be honest with you, again, it's not the best way to do it. Let me remind you, if you're out there, it's not the best way to do it. It's better to stick to one thing. Don't, don't do a, a huge variety of stuff because the way YouTube works, YouTube basically works like a TV channel, right? Like if you go to a Discovery channel, you're only going to watch stuff, well, well maybe not Discovery, Discovery's been branching out. Let me think of like, if you go to ESPN, only sports. If you go to uh, Nickelodeon, it's cartoon and kids shows. Uh, if you go to... Um, let me think. I don't know. HBO is like drama, like adult drama. You know what I mean? Like every channel has like its own thing. Oh yeah, like the Food Channel. You're only gonna see cooking shows on Food Channel. Now people go to the Food Channel specifically to watch food. They don't go there to watch, um, you know, I don't know, uh, novellas or whatever. You know what I mean? Like like TV dramas. So as YouTube is the same way. Like every YouTube channel is like a new TV channel and you go to that channel to, to basically see exactly what you want to see. So if you want to see aviation, you go to somebody's channel who does aviation. If you want to see racing, you go to somebody's channel who does nothing but racing. Now the struggle with doing that as one person is the fact that your whole life is centered around that one game, uh, especially when you become like really popular. So um, now you could kind of, like me, I'm kind of trying, I'm attempting this, I'm, I'm, it's, it's hard, it's not easy. I'm attempting to kind of broaden it just a little bit more to just simulation and not just aviation simulation or not just racing simulation because I enjoy the two of them so much that I can't do without the other. And I don't want to start a whole new channel that's just like blue racing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I would prefer not to do that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, why are planes why are planes bouncing like that? Am I plane bouncing? My plane's not bouncing. That's, that's like hella smooth, actually. Because before the update, that plane was bouncing. Remember that? Yes, I agree. Forza is amazing. I'm a little behind on the chat. Sorry about that. What up, uh, IXAD official? Welcome to the stream, man. Welcome, welcome back, man. Good to see you. I actually played Call of Duty just last night. Or did I? Did I? No, I think I, I meant to play it. I didn't actually get around to play it. I might play later tonight. No problem, Avia. But yeah, whatever you think about making a YouTube channel, though, just think about that, what I said. Like, YouTube is just like TV. You know, every person's channel is like another TV channel. And when you go to a TV channel, you know ex exactly what you expect to see on that TV channel. All right, how are we looking? We're coming up to Akesi. We might have already passed our top of the set. Let me check. Yes, so we need to descend now. Now, ahora. We need to descend. So let's go down to, I don't know, we'll just do 6,000 for now. I've been talking too much, man. I right, engage, managed altitude. 
And we'll see if it'll take us down to what we're supposed to be at. So you see a Kessie. Huh, actually there's no altitudes in here. Interesting, aren't they? That's definitely not gonna work then. All right, well, I'll just follow the, uh, the arrival chart then. Actually, we don't have an arrival. We just have the R nav. All right, so down to, we need to be at 3,600 at Crane. So Crane is here. It actually does say, uh, it says flight level 360, which is completely wrong. Can I change that? Did they, ch can I now change that? Let me see. Slash, uh, it should be 036 right here. No, it doesn't work, does it? Nope, it doesn't work. All right, well, we'll just have to do it manually then. So yeah, just so you guys know, we're gonna be at Crane at 3600, not flight level 360. Uh, is the weather radar for this A320? Yes, I believe so. Does this does this work, guys? Can anybody in chat confirm that this works for the default one too, or is this only a feature of the NX? I think it's for both. I believe it's for both. I'm put the uh, speed brake out for a bit. I love these clouds. Uh, can I activate the sound of the passengers? How do I do that, Daniel? Is that a part of this? I'll do it if, if you tell me how to do it. Oh yeah, now we're diving. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, have I tried any of the uh, Japan landing challenges yet? No. Uh, I did see in the landing challenge that uh, Hichojima, or Hichojojima, is actually one of the landing challenges, and we've done it twice. Well, I've done it twice. I did the live stream yesterday, we landed at that airport in actually worse conditions than it is in the landing challenge, so I guess I've done it live. Uh, and then I did it again earlier today. I did a test flight back into the airport again, and I did the landing. So I technically have done that, the challenge twice, just not officially logged a score, but I am planning on going back and doing it. Yeah, I know that some of these buttons like do things up here. I just don't know which one to press, so let me know. If there's a button I can do to do cabin sound. But isn't there one in this mod? I thought I remember there being one in the mod. To, like, address the cabin. Your VNAV went straight to 6,000 feet per minute. So did mine. Even more. Mine's 9,000 freaking feet per minute right now. Alright, you need to chill the heck out, plane. Oh, we are nose diving. Negative 15 degrees. How do I... Can I just... Vertical speed, please. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to take over from here. All right, guys. Confirm VNAV does not work. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> very quickly got down to 17,000 feet. Very scenic flight today. It, hasn't it been, Alan? Alan Farms, do you play Farming Simulator? I'm just curious, because your name says Farm. Is that really your last name? Or are you a Farming Simulator person? Yeah, we're. I'm going to completely take over this descent, because it has us going 250 knots. Yeah, that's not right. There we go, baby. Now we're rolling. All right, so because we lost so much altitude and we are probably below our vertical profile that we need to be on, uh, I'm gonna actually do a shallower descent and speed up. So I'm just gonna do like 1,000 for now. And we'll adjust as we get closer. I just wanna keep my speed up. That's really what I wanna do. Let's find out what the weather is out in uh, Kushiro. Again, we are actually still on VATSIM, guys. Just FYI. There's no ATC, because it's like 5 in the morning out here. In real life. 
Alright, so K, what we got? K? No, I keep putting K. R, J, C, K. Alright, Mitar is 0, 3, 0 at 3. Uh, few at 2,000, broken at 13,000. And temperature 13, dew point 11, QH 1013. So I'll go ahead and change that now. That's funny, Zelman. You were flying a Zebo yesterday, and while setting up the flight plan on the ground, it says steep descent at some SID. I should have listened because when I was ascending, it hit 5,000 feet per minute. Yeah, you probably should have paid attention. That's funny. Bohemian pilot, welcome back, man. Good to see you, bro. Hope you've been doing well, man. Carlos, you're so scared to install new add-ons. It seems like Microsoft is really fragile. Honestly, the add-ons are way more stable than the sim itself, so uh, go ahead. <laughs> I haven't honestly had really any problems with any of the actual like mods or add-ons. It's just the base sim is what I've been having issues with. Like These uh, freeware and payware developers have been doing a pretty good job with uh, most of their stuff. Pretty, pretty proud. Uh, Parth, yes, I have a sound mod. I'm using FT Sims A320 sound mod. Uh, Farming Simulator is a proprietary blue. <laughs> gotcha, bro. Gotcha. I played Farming Simulator for a little while, probably for like a week. Is that land? Yep, there's land right there. It's not for me. <laughs> I tried it, it's not for me. Maybe if Farming Simulator also had like cows and animals, I might be a little bit more interested, but uh, I was, it it was fun to play while like just hanging out, chilling, doing nothing with friends, you know what I mean? Because all we would do is we just farm and just talk about stuff, right? So it was fun doing that. It's just kind of like, I guess, uh, work that you don't have to think about. Mindless work, I guess what you would call it. Look at these clouds though, man. But obviously, I'm more in the in the flight simulators, um, fighter jet simulator like DCS, which I've been wanting to do. I haven't I haven't flown in a while for DCS. I want to get back in that a little bit. I've been getting in the train simulators quite a bit too. Um, what else? I tried out cooking simulator for a little while. Didn't do too great at. <laughs> I probably should post that video. I think I still have the recording. I might post it to the gold member. What up, Mick Sim? Welcome to the stream, man. Welcome back, bro. What's going on, man? Yeah, that's sick, Carlos. Uh, you're doing a tap livery, an Air Portugal livery. Uh, looks a bit blurry. Yeah, I think most of the liveries look a little bit blurry. Let me see this one. I haven't looked at it up close. Yeah. It's because of the way that Microsoft did their livery. Uh, and they haven't shared that technique yet. <laughs> um, the, all the liveries that are coming out, if you get really close to them, they're a little blurred. Only if you get really close to them, though. Have I tried the new carrier on the DCS? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I love it. I love it. How are we doing on our uh, approach here into Kushiro? Sushi Raw. So we got a little bit of weather up ahead of us, but it shouldn't be a factor. All right, there we go. All right, so our next waypoint is a Kessie. Oh, really? There's a Kessie next? Oh, we just sent it way too soon then. Oh, shoot. Oops. Ah, <laughs> uh, shoot. Yeah, we just sent it way too soon. I thought we passed a Kessie. All right, we're gonna stop right here at 10,000 feet. I don't wanna go any lower than this. Yeah, we're freaking 80 miles away from Akesi. Like, I thought the plane was gonna slowly take us down, but it didn't. Sheesh, my bad.
shoot, I'm climbing. I'm gonna go back up. <laughs> Take me to, I don't know, 18 at least. Is that gonna work? That's not gonna work yet. Wait, why is it still descending? Why are you still descending? Alright, engage selected altitude mode. Engage vertical speed. There we go. Uh, what VNAV update, Bear? <laughs> right, maybe I'm doing it wrong. But uh, I have not gotten VNAV to work yet. It might work. It might actually work. I'm just not doing it right. That's 100% possible. That is 100% possible. Uh, DCS, yes. DCS is free, but honestly, the planes that you want to fly are paid. So it's kind of like, a, you know, you basically buy in the planes you want to do, so... When I first got into DCS, what I did was I got the, the game for free, obviously, but then I bought Flaming Cliffs 3, which is a DLC, which costs, I think, $30 or something. You get, like, three planes. Um, but the real good planes are, like, the F-18, the A-10, the, uh, what's the other one? The F-16, the Harrier F-14, those all cost, like, $60 a piece. Actually, no, like, $80. Like, $80 a piece. They're, they're kind of expensive. But they're detailed, man. They are very detailed. Why are you still an OP climb? That's true, Keith. That's true. Yes, we're still flying. On the same leg. How long have we been going now? Yeah, it's almost been two hours. We should be there by now. Had some issues with our climb. Aviation360 says, hello from economy class. What up, man? Yeah, I've been hearing people say that VNAV works. I'm just, apparently I'm not doing it right. Maybe I need to maybe I need to relearn how to use VNAV in the Airbus because uh, it it ain't working for me. It, it it worked on the climb. I I had a user error, something I did wrong. I did not have my throttle and throttle climb mode, and so VNAV was not working for me on climb because I I did it wrong. Uh, and then for descent, I think we just maybe hit it too early, and it, it decided to descend at six thousand feet per minute. <laughs> so I don't know. Gonna have to do some more testing. What up, Sam? Good to see you, man. Sam Keeley. Yeah, uh, there's a the A4 Skyhawk is a free mod uh, that's been added to my to uh, DCS World. It is flyable. It has a clickable cockpit. It's supposed to work pretty good. I haven't tried it myself, but I've heard nothing but great things about it. Um, but apparently not a lot of uh, the servers, the online servers, actually use it. But, I mean, I just, I've just i been more focused on the F-18 and the systems with the F-18. So. And the A-10. Is my nose down? No, it's not. Alright, there's the island reappearing over there off our left. Um, I believe that is... I mean, it's still Japan. All of this, all of this is Japan. Let me see where we are. Yeah, basically... Is 
the way, yeah, the waypoint that I wanted to send out there was was not on my flight plan, or not in my FMC. So we got a bit of ways to go. That's good. I was really worried they were gonna make us rebuy the A10 uh, Warthog. That's great. I need to try it. I need to. What, what is it? I might maybe if I have time this weekend, I might get into some BCS world and uh, fly it a little bit, but. We'll see. Uh, have I spotted the other three guys who are follow following apart from the citation? No, I've only seen the citation. I mean, we all took off kind of spread out because of the uh, the back taxi situation at that airport. So we're probably a good, I don't know, 10, 20 miles apart. So I got to get a nice head start on them. Uh, but hopefully because of that, I'll be able to see them land when we get there. So if they're still, if they haven't crashed, I'll, uh, I'll be on the ground watching them land, hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, we can test the VNAV function again. It, it did show us a little top of the scent marker up here on our flight plan. Let's zoom in. I think it's gone now. Yeah, it's gone now. So I don't know. That sounds dope, battle. I think I might have reshade on my system, I just don't have it turned on. I used to use it for X-Plane. Actually, no, I uninstalled it. I used to have reshade for X-Plane 11 for a while, and I stopped using it during, I think, the Vulcan update. But it sounds interesting. I feel like reshade with ETS would be really nice. Reed Kid, what up, man? You're still here. Nice. All right, JD Bear says he's still here, too. Sounds good. A bit behind. No problem, man. I think it's kind of better that we're spread out, so that way when I do land, I can actually watch you guys land. Since we can't watch, since we can't watch our own landing, it'd be nice to watch somebody land, right? <laughs> we went out to get a flu shot and came back. Yeah, man, we're cruising. We're cruising today. We're about 10 minutes away from the ILS approach. All right. Well, I'm landing on the opposite side of that runway. Just FYI. RNAV 3-5. OJ says, I'll probably land by tomorrow. What are you getting, two frames per second? Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Yeah, we are, I'm currently, let's see, how far are we from Alessi, uh, or Akesi? We are, let's be 20 miles away from Akesi. At Crane, we need to be at 3,600, and that is in, uh, what's this, 20, 30, about 35 miles. So, I mean, we can go ahead and descend now. <laughs> I think, I think we should be clear to descend now, right? Uh, I'm going to attempt to use V, oh, we're, we're not even on VNAP profile, there's really no point at this, at this point. I'm going to see what it does. Uh, engage managed altitude mode. Let's see what happens. Oh wait, I didn't change it. Uh, we wouldn't be down to, was it 3,600? Switch that to uh, hundreds. There we go, 3,600. And now engage managed. Throttle's at idle, DES is engaged. That looks good. Uh, and then we'll just set this to what it, it wants to be at. Engage, uh, let's see, engage, manage, speed mode. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, beware at 10,000 feet is getting bumpy. Thank you, JD Bear. Appreciate that. Yeah, I see a bunch of clouds. Um, the METAR said there should be a, l a layer of clouds around 13,000. So that might be what you're hitting. I'm going to put the speed brake because what it's doing is it's trying to slow down first and then it's going to descend. I'm going to go halfway this time. I'm going to turn the music down a little bit so you guys can hear the engines spool up and down. Now here's uh, so see, there it is, so 240 knots and now it's pointing the, noise, the nose down. So what my flight plan has me doing for some reason, is it has me doing a loop-de-loop -loop here. I don't know why. Uh, we, what we want to do is go right from a, a Kessie 
through the arrival to Crane and from Crane to Kussi and then continue on for the Arnav. And look at it, it's doing it again. I don't know why. I don't know why it is descending that way. So we're gonna just take over and do it ourselves. So apparently I'm doing something wrong. There's something I'm doing wrong because other people are using VNAV and it's working for them. For me, it ain't. And I'm gonna switch to vertical speed mode and we'll just send it ourselves. And we'll see if it actually follows our vertical speed. And I'm gonna take over the airspeed too and we'll do 250 knots. That should be good. And we'll leave the speed brakes out because actually, no, we'll leave it halfway. Oh, look at these clouds. Oh my god. Just look up and it's just like, oh. That is so nice. Uh, this is the NX, my friend. The fly by wire A320 NX. Again, this will be our only flight for today, guys. Uh, definitely went way longer than it should have. Yes, yeah, so you see, there's uh, the island we're landing. I don't know what the name of the entire island is. Like, I'm sure it has a name, but um, it's like a northern island of Japan. It's a big island, though. If your airspeed is going crazy, it could be that you're um, freezing up. Maybe, maybe not. Passing 12,000 now. And uh, I'm actually going to descend a little bit faster. Let's do 3,000 feet per minute. Not 6,000, just 3,000. And we'll make our map a little bit smaller. Look like all these clouds. I think that's what all this is. So we got some red over in this area on the left. And looks like we're landing right in the red part too. So it might be stormy when we get there. We might see some lightning. That's true, Zelman. All the scenery kind of takes your, your attention away from the aircraft. When you're when you're low, I guess. Or when you're around the, the scenery. If you're just in the air and you're like IFR, then you're really distracted by how broken everything is. But whenever you're just flying and enjoying your flight, you're like, oh, this looks so good. And honestly, that kind of is, is what kind of sometimes can keep you going, too. You're like, all right, I want to do another flight to this other beautiful location, you know? And you kind of overlook all the problems with the plane. Just enjoying his view going through this cloud layer, this lower cloud layer. I guess you got in front of me. You know what happened earlier? Remember when my, my sim froze up when my controller disconnected? Uh, you might have got ahead of me back then. Also, remember it took me a freaking hour just to get to, to cruise? That's another reason why you probably got ahead of me. So we, we might be behind all y'all who took off with us today. Because uh, we are quite behind schedule today in this flight. Yeah, look at these uh these darker clouds over here. We'll see. We'll see if we get any turbulence or anything like that. We're already past through ten thousand. I did not get not one lick of turbulence going through ten thousand. So that's true. That's very true. Brain time. That's why the FS Lab A320 takes seven years. Seven? That's crazy. Seven years to develop. But it takes time and to really build a, a study level airliner for sh especially um it definitely takes a long time to do so anybody who says they're making a study level airliner in like six months is a is a lie do not buy that product all right so i don't want to do that loop de loop thing i want to take that out i'm gonna go straight in uh i want to go from uh I'm going to go straight to, to, to K-U-S-S-Y, which is what it says it's doing. I don't know what that loop is. It says our next waypoint is K-U-S-S-Y. So we'll see. We'll watch it. Because that crane, we need to be at 3,600, and we're actually passing crane now. So we should be pretty good on our altitude now. And we'll go ahead and take away these uh, speed brakes and turn the land lights on. Wait, did I never turn them off? I never freaking turned them off. How could you guys not tell me? 
<laughs> to not turn these off at some point throughout the flight. I am very surprised that nobody in the stream caught that. Oh well. Look at these clouds, man, man, man. Alright, we're at 36. Uh, at Noka, we need to be at 1200. And that's gonna be after KUSSY. That's our next altitude restriction we have. We're not really restriction, that's the next altitude on our arrival. Okay, now it's doing it. So it's going from KUSSY back to Crane. We don't want to do that. We do not want to do that. Take me to Noka, please. Direct. Direct, 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 direct. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's not even on there. It's not even freaking on there. All right, we're going to take over. We're going to have to take over. Uh, heading, please. Give me a right turn. Yeah, I'm not doing that loop thing. Why? All right, there's an airport right there. See that flashing light? It's an airport. Matter of fact, we're going to fly this baby by hand. By hand, yes. We're going to try fly it by hand. And since it's still shady, we're going to take the shades off. The shades have been removed. It's game time, guys. All right. Autopod disconnected. Uh, music is coming off. I have control. Uh, auto throttle still on, though. But I do have control. I'll bring our auto throttle back down to 210 knots. Yep, I'm going... Oh, sort of going visual. Right now, we're... Not visual, but we're going visual. Look at this. This is freaking gorgeous, guys. Oh my god. Airport should be right there, actually. I see it. There's a yacht. <laughs> I need to make a hard left turn. We're basically on final right now. Alright, real quick. Let's do this. Do this here. Come on, come on, there we go. And then I'm gonna disconnect the auto throttle. All right, auto throttle is disconnected. I have the throttle now. Adding in a notch of flaps. Auto brake set to medium. Turn off the weather radar and turn on the, ra the terrain radar. And we're very low, we're like 900 feet. I'm not sure how we got that low so fast. Now you can hear it. All right, gear's coming down. It's going to be a very short final for us on this uh, approach. All right, I see two white, two red. Keep our altitude here to watch out. I don't want to lose altitude too early. We're really swinging it in here. Really swinging it in here. Right, gears down and indicating three green. Now we're high. Oh, we got <laughs> plane landing on the opposite side. That might be JD Bear. He said he's on the ILS. There's no ILS on this side. Alright, you cannot land short here. You can see there's a big dip. Oh, <laughs> we're about to do it. Come on, baby. Power. <laughs> I think we should go around anyways. What do you guys think? There's a plane landing on the other side. Of course we need to go around. We're going around. <laughs> going around as a, as a plane on the, run, on the runway. A second go around in two days. I right, will make left traffic. Where's my track IR? Look at this area though, this looks beautiful. No, I don't want you auto throttle. 
No problem. I had a feeling it was you. I remember earlier you mentioned that you were doing the ILS. So I like, that's probably him landing on the other side of the runway. So I was like, you know what? We'll just go around and do it again. I had a bad approach anyways, so I won't do it over. I wanted to do, do over. The wheels actually did touch down. Let's put them up. The wheels touched down about 700 feet per minute. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad. Look at that, though. Oh, man. Taking a scenic approach. I like it. Sometimes the go-around not too bad. Yeah, exactly, Bapino. Practice, 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 man. Wow, it is... These trees just look really good. What up, Christopher? Good to see you, man. Welcome back. I, I got the airport on my left. It was kind of just like a last minute decision to, to take control because the plane wasn't doing what we wanted to do in the first place. I was like, you know, let me just take it from here. And we overshot the uh, cent uh, extended center line there. So we do a uh, left downwind here. To even go up to like 1,800 1, feet or something like that. Take out a notch of flaps. <laughs> You're back to 100%. School is draining your battery. Gotcha. Gotcha. Man, it's beautiful out here. So this is another one of the handcrafted airports, guys. That one right there on the left. Koshiro. So we got some rain out there, too. To the north of the airport. What is it, over speed? No. We're over speeding the flaps. Love the colors. Let's kind of swing out to the right a bit so we can give us a bit more room. Now you're scared, oh boy. Hey, we've, we've seen way worse landings than today, or even yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Remember our first landing in the 787? Or what, what plane was that? I think it was a 787. Or my first honeycomb landing? That was just horrible. Kimonte, what up, man? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. It looks like JD came down pretty good. Your landing pretty, looked pretty nice. We'll give ourselves a couple miles of room so we get it squared up. There's a couple of boats down there, a couple of yachts, a couple of rich guys down there on their yachts. I see y'all down there. All right, let's go ahead and turn in now. Have a pretty steep turn, so we gotta make sure we keep our speed up. See that? There's the airport over there. So turning left downwind. I also have the uh, MFD screen to kind of reference the the way in. Look at those clouds, man. Look at that. That is so cool. All right, we're going to go gear down again. We're a little fast. We're overspeeding our flaps right now. I like that animation, a little red, a little red flashy light there. Citations with you, sounds good. Is the runway clear now? We're right below the, the bottoms of these clouds. All right, turning final. A and A, uno, uno, seis. Ah, I overshot it again. No problem, Avia. You're right in time for the second attempt at landing today. <laughs> Look how quiet she gets. All right, let's try a bit more finer adjustments this time. Last time we just really overshot that runway. That was our first mistake.
We do have a, looks to be a, was that a six knot? How fast is that wind going? Six knots. Cross the nose. I need to get our speed back. We're too slow for the next set of flaps. Sorry, too fast for the next set of flaps. So we're going to put the nose up a little bit. Be prepared. We might have a little bit of a crosswind coming in. So my feet are ready. Here comes the next notch of flaps. Gears down, indicating. Flaps down. Let's watch our speed this time. All right, we're on the center line now. Get a little bit of power because we're low. Not too much because it'll create a massive balloon effect. All right, 500 ground proximity. There's one light. Still low. Power, power. Wind shear. Oh my god, I yanked it too hard. <laughs> that sounded bad. All right, wasn't pretty, but we're down. <laughs> That's my issue is that, that last moment right before. Reverse is green. All right, it's 80 knots. Can we make the first one? No, nah, we'll do the second one. Ah, it got real sketchy right before we touched down. I thought they got rid of that effect. All right, let's go. All right, we'll keep our letter roll to the end, and then we'll taxi back. There's no, I, don't, I think there is a taxiway down there. Is there? Let me check. Yes, there's a taxiway, taxiway, uh, Papa. Yeah, Papa is at the end. Not too bad. How do we do? Negative 412? <sighs> Not as good as I hoped for it to be. It got kind of sketchy towards the end. It looked good. It looked really good right until right before we touched down. We got that really weird wind shear effect right before we landed. I had to make some very last minute corrections. And, uh, and then I pulled the joystick too, far, too hard. Um, like kind of like trying to flare, but because of the sensitivity, it like it yanked it like ten degrees, and that kind of threw us off too. So, a few mistakes we made there, but you know we'll we'll learn from it and do better next time. Welcome to Kushiro, Japan. Another beautiful handcrafted airport by Gaia Simulations. That was some low fat butter. Yeah, that's what that was. <laughs> Thank you guys though, appreciate y'all's support, appreciate the positive comments. <laughs> I know it wasn't great, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't the, it wasn't the smoothest, greasiest landing, but it was, it was alright. I'm happy to, to be here and, and be better than that first attempt. I can sleep better with that one. The scenery is nice, look at the scenery. I'm gonna I'm attack, I'm gonna park right in front of the logo. Take the next one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the flight. Sorry for the delay. Went a bit longer than I hoped for it to go. Trying to figure out the VNAV stuff. I'll be flying the A320 a bit more uh, on my own time too to kind of learn some of the some of the, the kinks and stuff that it has. But I'll tell you this much, man. If you have Microsoft Flight Simulator and you're not using the NX, you are missing out. If you're gonna fly an airliner, definitely fly the A320 with the NX mod. It, it makes it so much better. So much better. All right, here's our parking spot. I don't know where our marshaller is. I think she's over there. All right, we're here, parking brake set. And not gonna worry about the APU. This is our last stop. We're trying to external power on, and then we'll pop the engines off. And make sure all the lights are turned off too. There we go. Nice. Nice flight. I'll take that. 
Oh wow, look at this. I didn't even mean to go. I didn't even mean to go in that view. Like he just threw me in the freaking inside. I guess we're doing an airport tour. Take a look. There's a duty free shop right there. You can buy buy your shoes. Oh, okay, that's cool. We actually have the map. This is where we are in Japan. It's actually a map of the island that we're on right now. Now that's cool. I don't know how they got that information. They must have went down to Japan and did that. Only one way I can think of being able to actually get that that board information. Anything on the back? Yeah, look at that. Now that's what I'm talking about. Freeware. It's a free airport. And it's this detailed. I mean, obviously it's not at the level as that you would see in a payware airport, but it's still pretty darn good for something you get for free. I like that. Let's see what else they got here. You got the sign here, Koshiro Airport. JD on the right sounds good, man. That's a lot. I like I like that livery. What livery? Eric Eric Corioto. Or <laughs> where I add all those letters? Eric Corio. That sounds dope. Nice. Oh, look at this. They got the uh, the rental car places in the back too. Let's go check out the tower. Probably just like the other tower we saw over in uh, what's that? Where did we come from? Haba Hacha. Hachicha. <laughs> Hachicha. <laughs> I'm horrible with these names, man. Horrible, horrible. Look at the tower. It's probably the same as the other one, though. Yeah. Pretty similar. Not exactly the same. The other one was, like, more wood-looking. But it's still pretty cool. Like, it, it could have just been empty. Like, straight up empty. So nice that they actually went the extra mile there to add that. I do appreciate that. Down here in the uh, boarding and... Uh, pickup area this is pretty nice even has a Chinese or sorry Japanese lettering down there which I would definitely not know how to read so I would have to see that look at that look at that bro these guys went all out these guys went all freaking out wow like I feel like this sets the bar for payware to be even higher because I could see somebody on X plane <laughs> or P3D making an airport at, at this quality and charging freaking $35 for it. No joke. I could see somebody charging that much money for an airport at this quality, but this is a part of the sim. There it is. a and I flew the right airline. a and You got a Jap Japan Airlines as well. What up, Moongo? Good to see you, man. Welcome to the stream. All right, now that we're here, we're going to go... Uh, Get us a car and head out. Keith, exactly, bro. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That is just attention to detail, man. Something I can definitely appreciate for sure. Every freaking sign. I mean, I'm sure there's some small things they left out. Look at that Nissan. Freaking Nissan. You ever wondered how to say Nissan? There it is. Times car rental your uh euro europe europe car you guys may be familiar with that exactly man it sets a new bar so if you're making scenery out there look at these this is your new bar like don't charge me for it unless it's better than this seriously that's really cool very very cool rent a car that is legit man i like it good job guy uh, thank you asobo and Whoever had to, you know, make this happen, I think that's pretty darn cool that we can have scenery at this quality without having to pay extra for it. I think that's just amazing. But, uh, guys, let's say our goodbyes. Let's say our shoutouts. Uh, I'm going to go back here and rent me a car. Um, probably give me a Nissan. Yeah, I think I'm going to get a Nissan. Let me go find a Nissan. While I'm looking for Nissans, go in the chat, guys. Leave me an emoji and uh, let me know where you're watching from. We can say our goodbyes, our shoutouts, and get out of here, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. For our next um, VFR bush flight. Not exactly sure where we're going yet, but it'll be fun. Wait, is that a Nissan? That is not a Nissan. That looks like a Nissan truck. Oh, I don't know. Look at that. Look at the lettering on that terminal. So freaking cool. So freaking cool. I'm gonna walk back here, jump the gate. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanna fly back. 
I kinda want to fly back. Not in this stream. I won't be. If I do, I won't be streaming it. Just letting it. Okay, what time is it? How long did it take us to get here? Probably fly down. Uh, I don't know some other airport. Look, rain coming. There's rain coming. Oh, I gotta love it. Let's gotta come up here and sit in this little uh, nice viewing area. The A and A VIP section. All right, Mungo, thank you very much, man, for hanging out with me today. J O J O I P, thank you, Keith B, thank you for coming through. El Batpino, uh, Messi Buku, thank you, my friend, very much for that. Kimon Tai, thank you, my friend. JD Bear, thanks for flying with us today. And uh, no problem with the almost, uh, you know, a runway collision that we had. It's all good, bro. No, no, uh, no hard feelings. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for flying me, man. It was a lot of fun. G Slayer, thank you, man, for coming through. It was definitely a beautiful one. Verun Gar. Guy Quad, what up, man? Welcome to the stream. How do you calculate your vertical speed if you want to descend from A to B? That is a whole discussion. I'm sorry, I have to leave. Um, we can talk about it if you join it on Discord. Maybe we can find out a way for you. But I know a lot of people say descend about was it 10 minutes away? No, was it 150 miles away? How far was it? Was it 100, 150 miles away, 1500 feet per minute, something like that? Um, there's also websites you can use to calculate your descent. Um, so you can go look at that up as well. Christopher Ramirez, thank you, Van. Trippy86, thank you, my friend. Uh, Avia345, thank you, man, so much for coming through. Jack Sorrows, thank you very much, my brother. Andy Miller. Derp, Derp and Schmertz. <laughs> Derp and Schmertz, ah, that's amazing. <laughs> thank you, bro, for coming through. Carlos, Jordan J. Thank you guys for coming through and hanging out with me. Super Lister, thank you very much. Mike Sesh Zellman, I, have not, I can't forget you, man. I can't forget Mike Zellman, the legend Mike Zellman. Come on, man. Who doesn't know Mike Zellman? That's a famous name right there, bro. Thank you for coming through, though, man. And I'm very honored that you can come through and hang out today. But anyways, guys, you know what it is. Remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. I will see you guys next time, next video. Why is my camera blue? Why is it blue? <laughs> next time, next video, I'm out.